Okay, so this is a really good example, like for me, um, we do makeup in a movie on our channel, which is unique because we talk about, uh, you know, a movie or a TV show or something in pop culture while I do a makeup look that is based on or with a new product or something. So a lot of times I will go to the brand and say, not only do I do stuff with guys, but I take you know, a review of something and I need, you know, I focus on eyeshadow palettes or um, eyeshadow or lipsticks or highlighters and I will incorporate it into the look. This is why this is unique. It, you know, this is the kind of audience that it, it appeals to. So that's how I kind of like go after and that's just one facet of what I do um, because I really do tailor to what brands are and what I do. Um, and this is something that I, I continually work on over the years that I have done this. Anything to add to that? It also kind of opens up the possibility of not just working in the niche that you think you're working in, but to be able to open yourself up by understanding what your niche is and all the different aspects kind of around it. You might be able to branch out and when you start working with brands, you might be able to work with a brand that isn't necessarily your niche, but is related. Mm -hmm. So if we got popular enough, we could actually start reaching out to movie studios to do a little bit of advertisement exactly. for their products. But that's, you know, something that's down the line. And I'm not even saying that you need to know from day one what your niche is. Your niche could change over time. You could um, develop it into something different. You could stumble onto something like, you know, whatever. You could just not even know. There are times where your niche probably will not work and you'll have to find something else. And that's okay too. Yeah. That's all part of the journey and the fun of doing content creation. All right, number two, prepare your pitch. And the way that you're gonna do this is you're going to make a press kit and a pitch letter to contact them. Um, I'm not gonna go into that in this video, that's gonna be in part two about how you're gonna do this, but you do need a press kit or a what they call a media kit and a pitch letter. You wanna tell them what is your plan? Why are you different? We already went over finding your niche. Um, and then what is your focus? Um, what I mean by your plan is you're going to say to them, look, um, for example, makeup in a movie. I would like to review some of your eyeshadows, um, you know, to do this video, this look. That's why I'm interested in working with you. This is what I will be doing with it on YouTube. This is what I will be doing with it on Instagram. So they know this is your plan. It's and almost, that you have one. It's almost like you're collaborating with the brands, not just, you know, I, I want stuff from the brands. You're collaborating with them. Exactly. As if you were collaborating with another blogger or YouTuber. It is very important, and I cannot stress this enough, this next part, to not ask for free stuff. Nothing turns a brand off faster than saying, I want you to give me stuff. Um, your better way of wording it might be, how can we work together? And I will talk about this more in the next section. But honestly, if you're just gonna, if you're going out here and just doing it for the free stuff, you're probably not doing it for the right reasons and brands are going to see that. Um, that's just very important. I have to put that out there. Number three, build a relationships with the brands. Um, so when I, when I talk about this, this is actually the most important part about working with brands is not just one and done, thanks so much, see you later. You really want to show the brands that not only do you have a good relationship with them, but that brands who are potentially going to be working with you can see that you have a good relationship with other brands because it builds the trust. Remember that rejection is a learning experience. It's not personal. There are many large companies that will work with smaller audience platforms, okay? So like, you only have 200 people that follow you on YouTube. There are large companies that will work with you. You just have to go out there and risk it and find it. But if they say no, just be like, okay, maybe not right now. Um, there are a lot of small brands that won't work with small companies and they, you know, they might only work with large companies, that's okay too. Some brands might look at you and say, I'm sorry, you just don't really fall into what we are looking for for our niche. Some brands may say, I'm sorry, we just don't have in our marketing budget to do anything with you right now. That is all okay. You have to remember that these people are putting their money into you. And so this is not just a, you know, you being like, well, I wanna make it on YouTube, so you need to give me this so I can review you. I'm doing you a favor. That's not how this needs to work. You are a support system. That's how you need to think of this. You need to think of it as, I like your product. I 
believe in your product. So let's show other people about your product because it's cool and I like it. And if they see your passion, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, I yeah. wanna work with you again. If you, if you watch a few other of the really big YouTubers that do have sponsored posts, you'll watch and they'll use the same ones over and over again because they have a relationship with, mm -hmm. that, with that group. And you're going to see people that get PR. Granted, a lot of people who get the PR kits, like, you know, people will be like, I just got this big package from Urban Decay. Those people probably have a very large audience. And if you're looking at like the large brands like that, some of them will work with you. I work with Pacifica. And I have in the past worked with Pixie, um, but sometimes they'll work with small people and sometimes they won't. They'll just kind of see what fits in for their channel. So uh, you will see these people have the really big packages. Do not feel bad um, that you aren't getting those yet. Is that a goal you can probably go to? Yes. Should you send in your stuff to them? Yes. But do it in a professional manner and you'll probably... They'll, you'll probably catch their eye, but just be professional about it, and I'll tell you how in a minute. And also remember, this is kind of like your niche. It's going to morph over time. Who mm -hmm. you're having relationships with, how strong it is, it's going to keep on changing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, remember that the brands have been burned too. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've contacted brands, and they've said to me, you know, I just don't know if I can do this because I've had people just ask me for free stuff and then not do their stuff. And I... I... I'm so sad for them. I really am. So what I will do um, is a variety of different things. I will tell you how I approach a brand in a minute, but honestly, don't be that person that ruins it for everybody else by not doing your stuff, by asking for free stuff and thinking you're entitled to get it. Because brands, it just ruins it. <laughs> like It just sours the experience and you don't want people to be treated that way. I mean, think about it like, if you are doing a collab with someone and you know they don't put up their video and you're the only one doing it, it's kind of like you just shouted that person out but they don't shout you out. Like, yeah. how does that make you feel? So make sure that you are holding up your end of the bargain and you're really thinking about the fact that this is you know, the brand's livelihood. This is how they make money, okay? If you're making money on YouTube and Instagram and you're blogging, awesome. But you're probably not right now if you're watching this. So I mean, I'm not, and I've been doing this for years. Um, I have I have yet to see a cent of actual money from doing this. I don't do it to get paid. I do it because I like doing it. It's my creative outlet. So yes. Um, so lastly, let me tell you in this one how how I approach brands personally. So basically, there's a variety of different ways, um, and then the first. The first thing I do is I say, how can I work with you? I would be interested in working with you. Um, and I can, and, and you know, you can lay it out. You can be like, um, so there's like, you know, a couple of different things. Um, you can, you know, do you have some kind of free blogger YouTube specials? Do you um, offer a discount, um, you know, I don't know, just like put out your plan and think in your mind like the best way to do it. Um, I'm not gonna tell you like exactly word for word what I say because it is my pitch, it's what works for me, but you just need to kind of like, that's why it's called working with brands because if you just go straight out and be like, I want free stuff, they're probably gonna be like, nope. Um, you wanna make sure that you are saying, yeah, so this is what I got. Um, a lot of times brands will come to you and say, you know, I, I can't do free. so. So basically what I do is um, sometimes I will, like let's say I've seen, and I have actually just done this recently, let's say I'm watching someone's video that I know and they have just reviewed something on YouTube, um, like an eyeshadow, okay? And I will go to, I will see that and I'll be like, I really like these, this is amazing. I will go in one of two ways. I'll either go to that person and be like, hey, I saw you worked with these people, it's really cool, would you mind if I did this with you? Um, you know, and this is a lesson that I've learned over time. It's better if you just don't go behind your friends' backs and do this. You know, just, you know, work. Maybe you can collab with these people or whatever um, into doing videos. Okay, so then, the, or what I will do is I will be like, I really like this. So I will go and make a purchase from that brand, especially if they're on Etsy, you can put notes in there and I will ask them something like, hey, I found out about you from these people's channels or these people's Instagrams and I was wondering if you have some kind of discount for my viewers um, or affiliate link or something like that. 
on a lot of times, I would say probably like 8 out of 10 times, someone will write me back and say, uh, no, I don't have anything like that, but I could send you some samples. Or, no, I don't have anything like that, um, but, you know, hey, tell me how it is, and if I like what you do, then, you know, we can maybe work together. So these are all ways that you can kind of get your foot in the door. Um, do you have to put out money? Yes. I mean, you're marketing yourself, so, you know, this is how you market yourself. You have to actually put out the money. Um, and it's a really good way to introduce yourself to a brand by buying some of their stuff. Exactly. Exactly. And then when, you know, when they're asking you, hey, can you link your stuff, that's when you're going to send them your pitch and your press kit. And let me tell you, I've had more independent brands on Etsy be floored by my press kit, which to me is like whatever, um, because it looks, it's professional. It means you've spent the time to do this and represent yourself through this graphical piece of paper and this picture, um, which means that you are going to spend the time on their stuff. So that's a really good thing. Um, lastly in this section, I do want to talk about the difference between doing free, discounted, and sponsored. People get this mixed up all the time and it's really, really funny. When you receive something free for review, you do have to disclaim it, um, but it is not a sponsored video if you get something for review. It's not. Let me tell you why. A sponsored video post, whatever, means they're paying you, like you're getting money for doing it. Um, you can find a lot of these companies like um, on social media sites, which I will talk about later in the other video, um, that will say, we will pay you for, you know, doing this amount of views, you know, you need this amount of reach, whatever, we'll talk about that later. Um, but a sponsored post means you're getting money, not product. A free stuff is you're getting product, not money. That is the difference. So that's why a lot of times in mind you will see this is not a sponsored post, but I will also make, but I did purchase everything in here. Because you want to be fully honest with the people who are watching your videos or looking at your Insta Instagram or whatever you're doing, your blogging. That is the difference. Obviously discounted means discounted. Since a lot of what you're doing is selling yourself, you do have to be transparent in what you're doing or you'll come off as fake. Yeah, exactly. Um, number four is do your review. So. Let me tell you how you're gonna do your review once you do this. Um, to effectively work with brands, number one, you wanna be humble. You are not entitled to free stuff. Underline twice, exclamation point. You are not entitled. And unfortunately, that's the day we live in. People think they're entitled, but you're not. Um, you know, it is a privilege to work with brands. It is a privilege to be able to represent them with your work. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Make sure you thank them in your videos. Make sure you thank them in your blog posts and say, yes, I'm really excited. Thank you so much for doing this because they are more likely to work with you again. Yeah. They could be spending this marketing money on a big ad campaign, but there's, they could be spending it on you. Exactly. So if they are, that's kind of a compliment. Mm -hmm. um, brands may not like your review. And I've had this happen to me before where I said like one thing that was maybe a little uncomplimentary and I had a brand go off on me. And guess what? In this case, you don't have to take that. A review is honest. A review is your opinion. And if brands can't take that, you don't need to work with them no matter how much free stuff they give you. Do not compromise your integrity for free stuff. That's just, no, just don't do that. Like, like you will not only compromise what what your reputation is, but you will also compromise your viewership because they will see you as someone who sells out. And you don't want to be that person. You just don't. You want to be you know, real and you want to be honest with your people. So they may not like what you have to say. That's okay. Just say thank you for working with me. I'm sorry you didn't like my review. And move on. But I'm going to tell you how to do it so that you can, now what I've learned, how to criticize without criticizing. Alright, so this is how it is. If you, even if you do not like the product, just be positive about it, okay? Um, for example, I'm gonna use this coffee right here as my example. So here is my coffee that I got from Starbucks and what I got is a cold brew. Um, and for me personally, I, I did not like this because it was a little bitter for my taste. Um, now granted, I didn't put sugar in it because I use stevia, 
but this coffee itself was a little bit bitter. However, if you like bitter coffee, this is the coffee for you because you will love the bitter and the fruity aftertaste that you get when you drink it. And that's how it's done, folks, because oh, not only did I say why I did not like it, and I was perfectly honest about why I didn't like it, but I also said why other people might. Because let's be honest, it's not always one product has one opinion. It might work for one person, but not for another. And that's how you put a positive spin on it. I greatly dislike bitter drinks, but sometimes she likes them. Yeah, sometimes I do. So always approach it so that maybe that viewer over there might like this. But what I just said about the Starbucks is not true. No, sure. It is bitter, but I like it that way. So that was just an example of what we're doing. So make sure that you highlight what do they do well. What do, Put yourself in like other people's shoes. So why don't you like it, but why might someone else like it? Go ahead and put that in there. Um, same thing with lavender. You guys have seen it in my videos. I cannot do lavender. It's just my nose makes me so completely sick when I smell lavender. So instead of saying, ooh, lavender, mm, smells great, and then later on being sick, I go, um, I can't do lavender. Marshall, do lavender for me. So he will smell it and he will use it. So that's why you can kind of do it without being bad. But if there is something that you can absolutely like not find anything good about, I'm not saying for you to not do that. I'm just saying, for the most part, keep it positive. You know, but if, if you're like, okay, so like, I'm gonna highlight another video from Megan actually. Um, she did one where she had a brush cleaner and <laughs> her brushes literally disintegrated when she used this brush cleaner and she hated it. In that case, yes, be honest and negative and say, I cannot use this. And neither should you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, here's the proof. It's not an opinion, it's proof. So in that case, be negative. It's okay. Present the data, and then when you have an opinion, present another one. There you go. So here it is, number five, follow up. I cannot tell you how many people just do their review and just drop and run. Um, it just happens. So basically, once you're done doing your review, you're going to uh, send your links of what you posted to them, either in an email or where you originally contacted them, and say thank you so much for working with me. Here are the links to all of my social media and my post and everything so that you can view it. This also gives them the opportunity for them to share it on their social media. So now you have like this double promotion thing happening. Um, if they have a Facebook group, join their Facebook group. You guys have seen, I do a lot of Sorenzo and Bottle Teen Designs videos. I have built a relationship with these brands. I've been working with these brands for like a year. I'm in their Facebook group. I'm part of their community. I give them feedback. This is how you continue to like build your your collateral with these brands and uh, if you are part of their community they're gonna trust you and they're gonna be more apt to think of you when they have something new coming out that they want to share follow their social media very important because you want to tag them right so every time like when you push your video up you want to tag them in Instagram that might seem like a no-brainer some people need to know that whatever ask for their references because because if you have a good experience working with a brand then you want to put that on your press kit and we're going to talk about that in part two but that is really important as well if they can give their stamp of approval on you and the kind of person you are to work with then other brands will in turn work with you after about a month or so ask them do they want to work again follow up and say hey I really enjoyed doing your stuff. We got really good feedback from our audience. They really liked it. Do you want to work again? At this point, especially if they're a brand that you went to and you actually purchased something from, they might be more apt to say, yes, I really like what you did. Here is a product for you to try. Um, so this is my very last example on this. And that is, do you guys have seen our, we do Nerdism boxes here on the channel? I purchased these boxes myself. I did not asked for free or anything like that. I just thought it was a really cool idea, so I got these boxes. I started reviewing them, and the really cool thing about these Nerdism boxes is that because they are independent sellers who put their stuff into a box, they are all, they all know the value of social media and they all understand what it's like to be struggling, okay? So when I did my first box, I tagged everybody in the box on Instagram and my social media, and they started following me, and they started sharing my stuff. So after a couple boxes of doing this, I finally got contacted by the person who's in charge of that boxes, and she's like, I never do this, but do you wanna do a giveaway? 
So I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> now granted, like there are some things that we had to iron out the deal because she didn't have a lot of money to put into marketing, but we are working together. And I was like, sure, I will invest this much if you do this and then we're gonna meet in the middle and this is what we're gonna do. Just because I built it up, I shared my stuff, I caused exposure to happen for these brands, they noticed. And that's what's really important about all this, right? It's all about the relationship. It really is, right and here. sometimes you have to put a lot of work into dating them first. Mm -hmm. And when you're done getting what you want out of the relationship, you have to keep following up with it or it's gonna disintegrate. I can't believe you just had that analogy. That's amazing. Well, I had another one, but it's it's it, it, it's a little raunchy. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out part two, which is how to do your press kit and all that other jazz, um, so that you can find out how to further look like a professional person online. Online. <laughs> Even if you aren't real life and you're weird and geeky like we are. Professional online. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and until next time. Stay zany. Bye-bye.